With almost 300 episodes to date, it's no wonder things can get weird. Things I put you through. The physical beatings alone. Yeah, we're still in one piece. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weirdest and most WTF episodes of Supernatural. Oh boy. What? Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the strange, out-of-genre episodes of Supernatural that don't follow the show's normal plot or structure. Number 10. Mystery Spot Rise and shine, Sammy! Any self-respecting sci-fi or indeed supernatural show has its Groundhog Day episode, where the main character keeps on repeating the same day over and over until they solve whatever mystery they're supposed to learn from. It's Tuesday. Here, Sam has to relive one of his worst days ever, the day that Dean died. It's bad enough for him that the day starts with Dean playing Heat of the Moment by Asia, but it's not until he catches the trickster responsible for it that they're able to move on. The episode taught Sam a valuable lesson in learning to live without Dean, but it's a future we didn't ever want to witness. Rise and shine, Sammy! Number 9. Live Free or Twy Hard Sammy. Some of the best quips the show has are when the boys get to give their take on popular culture. But it's not too often they dedicate a whole episode to poking fun at something quite in the same way they did to Twilight. Although, just wait. Our list might just have a few more examples. While they don't literally reenact scenes from the books or movies, the writers did create a hilarious case of the week where real vampires attack teenage fans. These are vampires, man. These... These are douchebags. Things get even weirder when Dean is turned into a vampire. But hey, he could be our Edward any day. Oh god, I'm Pattinson. Number 8. Scooby Natural ah, You're, you're a, cartoon. a cartoon! I'm, I'm a, cartoon. a cartoon! As noted, one great thing about the show is that the team behind it isn't afraid to take a creative risk by mixing up the genre or spoofing other shows. But an animated Scooby-Doo episode is beyond what anyone ever expected them to do. After Sam and Dean are sucked into the TV, they team up with Scooby and the gang to solve a mystery. We're actually mystery solvers, too. Mind if we tag along? That sounds like a swell idea. It's pretty weird watching them work with other crime fighters, let alone characters from a children's show. The episode is so out of left field it works, and it's especially funny to watch Dean's love and admiration for the Great Dane grow. Doesn't matter if we die, Scooby-Doo could die, and that's not happening, not on my watch. Take a bullet for that dog. Number seven, Dog Dean Afternoon. Change the station. What? This one had us scratching our heads. After the guys needed to figure out what a dog witnessed at a murder scene, they used a shaman spell on Dean so he could communicate with the animal. I'm gonna rat someone out, it's gotta be worth my while. I want a belly rub. The spell worked too well. Dean was not only able to speak and understand the dog, he also began to act like a dog. It was great comedic acting on Jensen Ackles' part, since the role called for him to bark at the mailman and ride with his head sticking out the car window. What a good boy! What a good boy! Yes, you are. Hey! Hey! Yeah! You! You! Number 6. Ghost Facers What are you guys doing here? What the hell are you doing here? Taking on reality shows like Ghost Hunters, this episode imagines what happens when Sam and Dean meet the cast of Ghost Facers. Ed Zedmore and Harry Spengler, two professional specter hunters. One, two, three, go! When they're tasked with defeating a real supernatural baddie in the Morton Mansion, the Ghost Facers quickly realize it's a job for the true professionals. The banter between Dean and Sam versus Ed and Harry is great, but more than a bit meta. And just like the reality shows that inspired the episode, it was also shot with a lot of handheld cameras which gave it that real-life horror feel. Let's go, watch him, take a look! Watch him! Go, go, move, move! Let's go, let's go! Number 5. The Monster at the End of This Book I'm sitting in a laundromat reading about myself sitting in a laundromat reading about myself. My head hurts. This episode is one of the earliest examples of the show breaking the fourth wall, and it's still among the best. After Sam and Dean find out that there's a series of supernatural books that depict their lives down to a T, they track down the writer behind it, Chuck Shirley. Chuck Shirley? The Chuck Shirley who wrote the Supernatural books? When they meet Chuck, they find out about the Team Dean versus Team Sam girls, and those who write slash fiction about them. In an even stranger twist, it turns out that Chuck is actually a prophet, 
who alerts them that Lilith is coming for Sam. He's a prophet of the Lord. It's fascinating to watch both the characters interact with real life fandom in such a creative way. Drag Sam out of here now before Lilith shows up. It's a prophecy. Number four, Fallen Idols. I'm tired of watching what I eat. I want to pig out. Getting into even stranger territory than normal was this season five episode that involved Paris Hilton and Abraham Lincoln. Yep, you heard that right. After a series of grisly murders are reported that involve artifacts from historical figures, like James Dean's car, Little Bastard, Sam and Dean figure out the deaths are tied to the strange wax museum in town. But things take a turn when they realize that the pagan god Leshy is really behind it. Oh, and she's taken over Paris Hilton's body, since humans worship celebrities over gods. Not entirely untrue, but we'll let that one sink in. You ever seen anything like that? No. Number three, changing channels. Town to town, two lane roads, family biz, two hunted bros. The trickster isn't a new nemesis for the duo, but this time his tricks are even more bizarre. The trickster traps the guys in various TV formats, including a Grey's Anatomy like medical procedural called Dr. Sexy MD, a Knight Rider reboot with Sam starring as Kit the Car, and an 80s style sitcom. I'm gonna need a bigger mouth. <laughs> They jumped in and out of each format with ease, and it was a fun chance to see them skewer other formats. The show really commits to big moves like this one, and because of that, we didn't get too much whiplash seeing them change tone so quickly. Oh crap. I don't think we killed the trickster. Number two, fan fiction. His name is Sammy, I'm Big Brother Dean. The show loves to give a sly wink to its rabid fandom like season five's The Real Ghostbusters episode where they attend a supernatural convention. But the musical in fan fiction takes that appreciation to a new level. Sam and Dean are on a mission after a teacher's sudden disappearance. When they investigate the school, they are stunned to find the students putting on a musical based on their lives. With their pasts turned into excellent songs like The Road So Far and A Single Man Tear, it's hard not to admire how committed this show is to pulling out all the stops. Our only hope is that someday that musical actually goes on tour. A single man tear, a single man tear, that's all we fear. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Can you get me a uh, smoothie from Crafty? You want a what from who? You are a PA. Is dancing with me. Welcome to the fun house. <laughs> Number one, The French Mistake. Supernatural, scene 36, take one. We're not sure that Supernatural can or will ever top how unexpected and bizarre this episode was. To mess with our guys, Balthazar sends them to an alternate reality, where they're the actors Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles filming the TV show Supernatural. The breaking of the fourth wall and the metafactor nearly made our heads explode, but in a good way. Should we be killing anybody? I don't think so. Sam and Dean spent much of the episode leading the normal lives of the actors, which includes meeting Jared's real life wife, Genevieve Cortese, who played Ruby on the show. We gotta hand it to him. Seven seasons later, and we're still thinking about this one. That's fake me. Yeah. This must be fake mine. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.